Missing focus can be heartbreaking for photographers. So in today's video, I'm sharing my fail safe technique that ensures I never miss focus when out shooting photos. So there are a few different techniques for obtaining focus, such as the half press and shoot method or manually dialing in your focus with the front focus ring or my preferred method, which is back button focusing. So today I'm going to run through how I use back button focusing. And by the way, I've just shot an absolutely beautiful sunrise, which I'm going to come back to in a minute. But I just wanted to go through this in the daylight because it was super dark this morning. And yeah, I thought that'd be better. So back button focusing is a powerful technique for all types of photography and it allows us to have greater control over the camera's autofocus system. Now I'm shooting landscapes this morning but it works great for multiple genres of photography. To use back button focusing, I start by disabling the autofocus function button here on the camera's shutter button and assigning it to one of the rear buttons on the back of the camera. Now this is often labelled AF on, but many cameras you can customise the buttons so you can choose a different button if you wish. Now with this setup, you can compose your shot, then press the back button to activate autofocus. This decouples the focus from the shutter button enabling you to lock focus on a specific point within the scene. This technique is particularly beneficial when you want to capture multiple shots without having to refocus, especially when you need to recompose your image without altering the focus point. Now you can use back button focusing with continuous and single point autofocus, but I tend to use manual focus for my landscapes, meaning I can select my focus point in my scene use back button to lock the focus on a specific point and then I can take my photos knowing my focus will not change which is great if I choose to take several images over a period of time. One of the many advantages for using back button focusing is that when your camera is securely mounted on a tripod you may not have a focus point precisely where you need it to be for locking in your focus. In such situations you can reposition the camera to place a focus point over the subject you intend to focus on, use the back button to initiate the focus and then recompose your shot. To make sure I've nailed my focus once I've locked my focus on my subject, I use the zoom feature on my LCD to make sure it's tacked sharp where it needs to be. On my camera, if I push the joystick in, it zooms in to the exact point of where I focus, which is a great way to check focus really quickly. Focus peaking can be another useful tool, but it's not as accurate, especially using a large depth of field, which is often the case for landscapes because everything will be sharp pretty much from your foreground to the background. So focus peaking really is not helping you see exactly where you focus. One thing I do a lot though, especially if I'm taking a series of images over a long period of time, is to periodically check my focus by reviewing my taken photos. It's so easy to knock the camera or something, you know, so regularly checking your images is definitely worthwhile. Now I've played around with the touchscreen to focus and this can be useful as well, for, especially for focus stacking. But as a general rule of thumb, I found back button focusing to be the most reliable technique. Anyway, please do join me as I rewind this morning and hopefully we'll capture some real world examples of using back button focusing at this fantastic coastal location. Oh, the sunrise was quite nice as well. Well, good morning. Hope you can see me. It's very, very dark this morning, but uh, it's a beautiful golden glow on the horizon. So I'm hoping we're going to get a good sunrise this morning. And the tide is super high this morning. It's about eight and a half metres. So I'm really struggling to find somewhere to shoot this morning. So I chose this particular location because I know there's quite a lot of driftwood at the top of the shoreline. So I'm hoping that maybe I can use some of the driftwood as some foreground interest. So it'll be interesting to see what we can come up with this morning. But it looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunrise. So let's get on down the trail and see what we can come up with. So it looks like most of the driftwood is further up the shoreline. I was kind of hoping the sea would be lapping around some of this, but it's not. There's one or two bits floating around, but 
probably going to have to abandon the driftwood idea unless I come back further up the beach and maybe just photograph a piece of it here, which might work. So that might be something I can work on. But I think the shot looking down the coast is looking really nice. So I think I'm going to concentrate on that first. Sea's just splashing over these pebbles. So I think we've got a really nice shot looking down. Hopefully we'll get a nice splash of colour as that sun rises. So that's going to be my first port of call. And then maybe I'll come back to these pieces of driftwood here and see what we can work with. So yeah, looks like it's going to be a lovely sunrise. If you're interested to learn more advanced photography techniques, you may find my online classes very helpful. They're all available to watch over at my members' website, The Photographer's Clubhouse. The next 50 people to join will receive a 20% discount for their first two months. So only £5.20 per month, and you can cancel any time with no hassle. So why not take a look today and get involved? Soaking. I think I might have to get further up the beach a little bit. I'm gonna get wet here. Okay, well, after getting completely soaked, I've decided to move a little bit further up the beach to try to get this shot. Because every now and again, you get a set of waves come in and they kind of dump on the shoreline and just splash right up onto these rocks. You can't really judge where they're gonna land. So yeah, I've got to wipe a bit of spray off the front of my lens, I think. So one of the good things about this camera is that if you're in manual focus mode, you don't have to disable the half press. It automatically does it for you on the shutter button. So when it's in manual mode, the half press doesn't work at all. You have to use the AF on button or the manual focus ring. It's the only way you can focus. So essentially, it puts it into back button focusing for you automatically, which is really good, especially if you do like half pressing and shooting with say single point or autofocus, just means you don't have to go in and change any settings. It'll just do it automatically for you, which is really cool. Basically the composition is an area of pebbles here where the light is catching, the cliffs and the sea and the sky. So four different elements to the scene, but I've tried to compose it in a way that it's really simple. So it starts in the bottom right hand corner with the pebbles. The pebbles lead the eye up to the cliffs. The cliffs lead the eye to the sky and that's kind of where you end up. And hopefully there's going to be a nice splash of colour as that sun rises. So yeah, I do have my shutter release cable on, which is just helping with the timing which is always a good thing. And I'm using my AF on button to focus on the pebbles just down here about a third of the way into the scene. And F8, 35 mil, that makes sure I've got everything sharp within the scene. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, grab one now as the light's changing. So currently I'm at a 30th of a second. So I think what I might do is put a three stop filter on just so I can uh, get a bit of a longer shutter speed, show a bit of motion in the water. So we're just starting to get some colorful clouds just come over this headland here, which is absolutely amazing. I was getting really worried that the sky was just gonna to be too boring for this shot. So I'm hoping they're gonna sweep into the shot. And actually, I think the sun must be up right now, but I think it's just round the headland there. But that's not an issue. Oh, there's a big wave coming now. So I'm hoping this wave is gonna splash right up onto these pebbles now. It's just a case of capturing that motion. There's another one coming. Oh yeah, that looks good. And some of those golden reflections in the water as well, which is always awesome. With scenes like this, it's just about shooting, isn't it? And just keep shooting over a period of time and just keep checking things, checking your focus, checking, you know, obviously your exposure, making sure you've got the correct amount of motion blur in your shot. Oh, there's a good one coming. Keep shooting this. Oh, that's right up onto the shoreline. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm after. Thank you. 
So as the sun has come up over the headland there, I've switched my attention to this amazing piece of driftwood we've got situated amongst the pebbles here, which offers a really interesting foreground element, I think. And the sun is just nicely lighting it as well. It's quite diffused at the minute as well. There's a little bit of high cloud about, which is quite nice. So as the light changes, I'm gonna to continue to shoot this maybe over the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. There is some cloud detail, but there are some aircraft trails in the sky too, which I'm not keen on seeing in my photos, I have to say. So I may remove a few of those in post-production if I need to. And I'm using an aperture of F11 to get everything sharp. I'm focusing about a third of the way into the scene obviously using the AF on button there to get my focus. And that gets everything sharp in the shot that I need to get sharp. I'm not gonna focus stack this image. The 13 millimeters on this F, at F11, everything is sharp pretty much from about, I don't know, so far in front of the lens to infinity. So it's always quite handy, isn't it, shooting wide. Probably only got about 10, 15 minutes left of golden hour. So I'm really hoping something nice happens. It's just a big blanket of cloud out there right now. So fingers crossed, we'll get the shot. So I definitely think back button focusing helps when you're out shooting landscapes or any genre of photography for that matter. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out another one of my landscape photography adventures. If you enjoyed the content, please be sure to give it a like as well, because that really does help me out. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then why not check out one of my future workshops or my zine, all of the proceeds go to help create videos like this and reach new locations. Thanks once again, guys, and I hope to see you all very soon.